Hi, it's Jan Beta, and the video I wanted to make uh, takes a bit longer than I expected, which happens a lot actually. So I thought I'd tackle something else from my list that is hopefully going to be a quick one. I am going to build my own joystick. This is not going to be electrically challenging in any way because I'm just going to build a very simple joystick that can be used with uh, standard old computers like the Amiga or the Commodore 64 or the Ataris. And I'm using one of these uh, rather inexpensive clones of uh, real arcade parts. These, I think this whole kit cost me about 20 euros or something. Um, I'm going to link that in the video description. Uh, and I have this lying around for quite a while, so I think it's about time I tackle this project. This has a an arcade-like joystick, an actual joystick, and quite a few uh, buttons that we can use to wire different things up to. I'm just going to build a very simple standard Atari output joystick to be used with retro machines. You can, of course, do all kinds of upgrades to this add your own autofire circuitry and things like that. I'm going to try to keep it simple because I want this to be a little inspirational video and also I want to get started with this project. I'm probably going to do some upgrades in the future. I have some ideas. First of all, I want to lay, kind of lay the groundwork for this project and just uh, put this in a nice enclosure and add some buttons and wire this up to a DB9 connector as is commonly used by most retro computers and consoles. As for my enclosure, uh, I had this thing sitting in my lab for a, a number of years now. I found this on the side of the road. It's like a steel, like a money, uh, money box. I'm not sure what you are calling these things in English, it's actually made in England, it says, <laughs> quite fittingly. So this is meant to be used as like a, a point of sale kind of money storage thing if you don't have a real cash register. So this is kind of the simple thing. And it's a very solid box, which is kind of suitable for a joystick. I want this to be kind of arcadey feeling. This also has enough room to put all the expansions and modifications in it I could possibly dream of. As I said, I'm going to keep it simple for start, but I'm going to keep this in a state where it's easily expandable. So this steel box, actually, uh, it doesn't, it didn't ca come with any feet, but it has some pre-drilled holes here for feet, so it probably had some when it was still used as a cash, cash register. It comes with this inlay to easily put money in. And I already, I had to bend this because uh, I don't have the key for this. It has a lock. So uh, I think I want to keep this in place even and just use it like this way, put a joystick somewhere like here and put a couple of buttons on both sides. Uh, first of all, I want to get rid of this plastic part though. I hope I can easily remove that. This is, yeah, this bends. I can bend it with my fingers. Not very thick sheet metal here that they used. Probably not the most expensive thing when it was sold. I'm just going to get rid of this completely. This can go into the trash compactor. I don't really need anything to close this uh, permanently. I just kind of want to keep this in a state where it's easily openable. <laughs> As I said, I want to kind, kind of have like the arcade feel and have a larger surface. I, I think this is going to end up being something that I put in my lap to uh, play games and, and uh, have the joystick. So I'm going to put the joystick in the center, I think, and uh, have this, yeah, like to rest my hand on here. 
like somewhere like this and have buttons on each side because I, I like to switch hands, uh, basically. I know the arcade way to do it would probably be to have the joystick left and the buttons on the right. But I kind of I kind of change hands. It's it's a matter of preference, really. So you could modify this in a way that it suits your needs. This top ball you can unscrew, so we can just drill a hole for this rod and fit it through the hole and uh, screw this in. My connector is just going to be a salvaged cable. I have this bag of joystick components that I. Uh, sometimes use micro switches from to replace them. This used to be <laughs> a Competition Pro joystick that got really brittle and uh, it, it, when I got it, it had already been repaired and the original joystick, the actual joystick had been replaced with another one that doesn't quite fit the case. Uh, yeah, this is basically my spare parts. You can still buy like joystick extension cables with these uh, DE9 actually connectors, not DB9, but they are often referred to as DB9. You can of course make your own cable if you have a, a cable with enough separate wires in it. Yeah, this is just the way I do it and I hope you feel inspired or just entertained by my way of doing it. So I want the joystick to be roughly in the center here, I think because it leaves enough room to rest my hand and I want to use it in this orientation. So it opens up like this and we don't risk opening, opening it up uh, while handling the joystick. So this is roughly 30 centimeters, I think. So we should just have our joystick located somewhere like here, the 15 mark, and that should be dead center. Should we center it the other way as well? That's 23. Half of that would be somewhere like here. That would be dead center. So I want my joystick there dead center of this case. And my buttons, <laughs> I think should be aligned. So I'm just going to offset them slightly towards the top there. And I think maybe like this far away, which would be seven centimeters. Yeah, seven. <laughs> so we should have a button here and a button here. Yeah, as I said, I want to keep this as simple as possible for uh, this start of the project. Uh, so I'm just going to put the the actual joystick in and two fire buttons that are going to act as uh, fire button one, the standard fire button. Most older games don't use separate fire buttons, although the Atari standard wiring allows for a secondary fire button as well. So uh, there is some games that actually use that and we might add that later. Uh, I also plan to, at some point, I want to have auto fire in this and things like that, but uh, I'm going to keep it simple for now and just see how this feels when I use it. I think it should be pretty nice actually because I tend to have joysticks in my lab while playing anyway and the uh, ones you could buy are mostly like around this size so they easily slip and, and slide around in your lap. And this could be something I have sitting on my lap and just have it uh, stay in one place. Should be pretty cool to use, I hope. Let's see. So I also have to make up my mind about where our wire actually comes out and I think I want that in the center here on the bottom part. So let's do Let's make a mark there somewhere. So we need something around here. Something like this, I think, should do fine. So I'm just going to mark these positions with my awl so the drill bit doesn't slip too much. So I am just going to use a four millimeter drill here. And I'm using some of this stuff, which is a uh, this is like a drilling paste, like a drilling oil kind of thing. Grease, basically. It should allow for better cooling and for easier drilling, hopefully. Let's see. This goes into the wrong direction.
Okay, that went relatively well. Let's see the other ones. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't too bad. I'm going to try to use a step drill to widen these holes to uh, fit. The joystick hole doesn't need to be hilariously large, I think. Yeah, it has some throw. We are just going to, to try that. And of course, we have to drill some uh, screw holes to uh, screw this mounting plate in from the backside. So let's try our luck here. I'm starting with the uh, center hole here because that is going to be the smallest hole. Just adding some of this uh, paste here to the drill. Yep. There we go. That should definitely be large enough. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. For these buttons, I need a much wider hole because I want to use these buttons here. These are probably, yeah, the second to last step on here or something. We're going to see. Just adding some more uh, solder paste. I always want to say solder paste. This is not solder paste, this is drilling paste or drilling oil. Let's see what we get. Yeah, we need to get one more step done. Putting some more grease on it. There we go, that should do. Yep. That's the exact diameter we need. On to the other one. Clearly I should have clamped this down properly and things like that, but uh, not do it like I do. <laughs> Probably I should wear protective goggles. I think my battery might be dying as well. I shall uh, get out the real drill, <laughs> the corded drill, I guess. Okay, that worked a bit better. <laughs> should have used that from the start, I guess. Now this should be large enough to fit one of these. Yes, it is. Uh, one last hole for the cable. There we go. So here's where we're at. Worked rather well. Uh, had some trouble drilling these holes because this is steel, as I said. And yeah, we really needed some cutting oil there or cutting grease in this case. Uh, but we got the job done and we should be able to fit our buttons in these holes and our joystick through this hole. And of course we have to drill four additional holes. I forgot about that for mounting our joystick. Yeah, let's, let's try and fit the joystick, I guess, at this point. I cleaned this up roughly. Uh, I'm going to do more cleaning once we have all the holes drilled. Yeah, that's exactly the correct size. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm going to try to center this. I think I'm just going to use some tape to be able to uh, center the stick in the hole. And that's exactly parallel. Let's see how it lines up with the hole. Yep, that's exactly centered, okay. So this is where we want this. I'm going to mark the positions for my holes here. Just going by eye here, because it's not super crucial. These cutouts are like ovals, so we have some leeway. And I just used this uh, random Commodore 64 cartridge, which is an easy flash cartridge, actually, uh, 
to line this up parallel with this corner here. And I'm going to drill these holes from this side, obviously, because it's going to be a lot easier. And then deburr them from the, the other side. I want uh, to use countersunk screws. We are going to have to do some drilling with a larger drill bit from the other side anyway, because I don't want the screws to uh, rub against my hand. This should be relatively easy compared to our other drilling operations here. So now we are going to use a much larger drill, I think an 8 millimeter drill. This is a 4 millimeter one. And we're going to do that from the other side, obviously. Also to be able to put our countersunk screws in later, that I'm going to show you in a bit. A bit more. That's rather nice. So now I'm cleaning up all the uh, little splinters of metal. I'm also going to clean away some of the grease that's still on there before I put any of the components in. I'm just using some window cleaner and some alcohol here to clean up the whole thing. Yeah, this cleaned up reasonably well. And I think uh, we can fit our joystick parts. So I got this assortment of countersunk hex screws and I think I want to use these here. So I guess these are long enough to uh, fit our joystick in there. We're going to have nuts and washers from the other side. These are, as I said, hex screws, just because uh, Phillips screws are rougher to touch. These are as... Could, of course, use like uh, button head screws or something like that, just to have it as clean as possible. So I'm going to use some tooth washers. So I'm going to loosely fit this. Shake-proof washers, which are not really shake-proof at all, but they just help grip into the metal, I guess. If we, once we tighten these fully. I hope this is going to turn out nicely. I think so. Nothing much that can go wrong at this point. He said, messing everything up. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, and then uh, obviously this plastic washer goes over this, so we hide our hole there. And this should just slide on the surface easily, which it does. So, uh, tightening these. Okay. <laughs> this should be super tight. Just adding my ball. So these should just clip in, which they do. Nice. Okay, and we're done. Uh, thanks for watching this video. No, we obviously have to do some wiring to make this an actual joystick that's usable. Da -da -da! I'm just going to unplug these wires here and try to feed my uh, the original grommet through my hole here and all the wires. Let's see if that's big enough even. Might be able to fit this in there. Let's see. So this requires the use of some force, I think, because it just fits. Yeah, there we go. That's in. And I'm just going to secure this with a little cable tie from the other side. And we should have a super sturdy cable. Yep, that's what I was hoping for. That's super solid now.
So basically what remains to be done now is uh, to wire all these connections up to the correct spots. And I'm going to use the cables that were provided with the joystick. And these have these spade connectors that just can be uh, connected to the spade connectors on the micro switches and on the fire buttons here. We are just going to have to look up the wiring again, do some continuity measurements. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure which color of wire goes to which pin on this connector. And also if they are all connected even, I'm not quite sure. This cable has seen better days, so we might even have to replace that. So I printed out the wiring. Uh, this is actually from the computer port. So this is looking at the computer port. So our numbers are reversed. We have pin one here. Uh, by the way, I added just one of these connectors to here to have it easier to measure. <laughs> so I'm just going to, uh, this is going to be pin one, two, three, four, five for me and six, seven, eight, nine from this, uh, viewed from this side of the plug. Uh, there's also often numbers printed on the connectors themselves. So we are going to have it easier so let's see, and I'm just going to note down which wire color matches which position. Pretty confident that we have all the connections we need for this basic joystick. If you want anything fancy like added pedal controllers or anything like that, uh, should go with a joystick extension cable or make your own cable. The extension cables often have all the pins connected through, so there's nine wires inside there and you can connect everything you need. In this case for the simplest joysticks this Atari standard is uh, pin 6 is fire button and up down left right one two three four we have ground all the directions and fire buttons basically are just switches who short the wires to ground to tell the computer to make that movement or the console or whatever. So on pin 1 we have the white wire, so that's white for up. Just going to take a note of that. White. Yep. Blue. And I'm just going to go through all of these. Pin three. It's green. Oh, we actually have a bad cable there, I think. That's not good. We have an issue there. This joystick cable is broken. So I'm going to have to use another one, I guess. Yeah, let me just show you this briefly. I'm measuring the resistance from pin 4, which should be the pin for right, and our brown wire here. And ideally, this should just be 0 ohms or thereabouts, but it is like around, I don't know, 100 ohms. It's changing around very quickly. That's not good. So we clearly have a broken joystick cable here. I'm going to try to find another one. I probably should have checked this before I went through the trouble of uh, putting this, pushing this through the hole there. But yeah, removing it should be easier because I can probably just cut it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm going to do. Just going to cut this cable just so I don't accidentally use it again. Probably should get rid of this cable altogether. So, uh, I went to the basement, got another cable and measured it and it is all right. And then I fed it through here again, like I did before. Didn't show you in detail, but yeah, this is a pretty sh nasty cable because the wiring is very thin. This came from a cheapo joystick model, sorry. Uh, we are going to connect this up in a way that I'm using these uh, wires with the spade connectors that came with the joystick kit and I'm going to make these my ground connections, the blue one. Each of these switches, these are all just 
micro switches, four one four micro switches here and two micro switches for the actual joystick buttons. And I'm going to wire one side of each, doesn't matter which side even because they're just closing uh, to ground basically. So we need one side of the switch wired to ground and then we are going to put a little extension cable on here and wire it up to the black cable. The color coding is actually the same on this. Seems to be kind of a standard. So yeah, everything as before except this cable actually works. So in order to connect all these uh, pins to one ground wire, I just twisted these cables together and I'm going to add some solder and add a bit of heat shrink tubing and then uh, run a longer wire to this black wire here. Yeah, I think that's the operation. And then I'm going to use these white wires to actually connect the directions and the fire buttons. So this is going to be the soldering part. And this is our pinout. Uh, up goes to the white wire, down goes to the blue wire, left goes to the green wire, right goes to the brown wire, six goes to the orange wire, and ground is our black wire. So yeah, so obviously uh, our wiring that we are going to do, this is, if I push this joystick up, it's obviously the micro switch that's actuated is the one in the down position, so yeah. You probably, it's kind of mirrored, you know? <laughs> so we have to think uh, in a mirrored way to wire this up. But uh, since these are all spade connectors, it's going to be super easy to rewire this should I make a mistake, which could happen. So I'm not going to bother you with uh, much talking while I'll solder. Just uh, going to connect the, these with uh, some extra length of wire from my parts bin here that I thankfully have a number of different colors of. Just going to cut some nice pieces of wire, strip the insulation, solder them onto the positions they are supposed to go and uh, yeah, then go from there and add some heat shrink tubing to each of them. And that's all our wiring. I used some slightly different colors here because I hadn't, didn't have a brown wire and an orange wire. So I used yellow for uh, the orange wire and red for the brown wire. But otherwise my color coding is still correct up to the point where we use these uh, provided cables. So yeah, now it's just a matter of putting our connections in the right spots and then kind of cleaning up the wiring a bit. As you can see, I left some of these very long so we can still open this up without issues. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can get these things wired up according to the plan.
Oh, and I completely forgot that we had we have two fire buttons, so I have to wire up <laughs> a second wire to that. Uh, what is it? Orange wire. But we can still do that. That's why we had one connection missing there. Just going to wire up another one of these there. Just going to strip this in the middle. Wrap this around there and connect it with a blob of solder. Sorry about that. I just forgot. There we go. So I'm just adding some cable ties to the loose wiring. And after that, we should really test this. And obviously this is hopefully not going to get in the way of the stick. Yeah, no, it's not going to interfere because these are going to sit on the bottom of the case anyway. But in theory, we should be done with this. This should now be a, a cash box. It's actually, I think this these things uh, can be called cash boxes. A cash box joystick. Let's test it. So I got out my Atari 800XL. Okay, I have this in my lap. Hopefully, we should be able to play a bit of River Raid. Wow, and the the delay from my upscaler here. Super horrible. <laughs> but the joystick seems to work. That's good. Faster, faster, slower, slower. Left, right, fire, other fire. <laughs> Yay. It does work. It does work. And the form factor is quite nice, actually. Hi. It's not what you're thinking. I'm just playing a round of River Raid. <laughs> yeah, this feels kind of like I expected this to feel. The joystick is pretty wobbly compared to uh, other like competition pros or something like that, but it also has uh, like a slightly shorter stick, which makes this pretty quick to, it doesn't have a lot of throw. So it actually feels pretty nice. And the sound is, uh, as you'd expect, from th something that is in a steel box. It sounds pretty solid. And yeah, obviously we can modify this to our liking. Yeah, this feels pretty good on the table too. We made a joystick! Yeah, that's how you make a really uh, simple and rather inexpensive, especially if you find a suitable case in the trash, <laughs> joystick. So maybe this inspires you to make your own at some point, which would be nice. Let me know if you do make your own and uh, also let me know what ideas we could put in here. There's a lot of room as you've seen, so I'm probably going to put an auto fire circuit in here at some point. Maybe I'll add uh, pedal controllers, maybe I'll add a secondary fire button. I'm not sure what to do with this. This is just the basic, the groundwork, as I said this is going to be expanded on in the future. It feels pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with uh, how this turned out. And yeah, of course there are better, more expensive, real arcade grade parts, but these are super nice already and they are very inexpensive as I've shown you. Yeah, thank you so much for sticking around for this video. Thank you for your support on Patreon and on the channel memberships page and also on Ko-fi and on PayPal. All the ways to support me are linked in the video description in case you feel the need to do so, which would be very much appreciated, of course. Thanks for watching. I'm Jan Peter. See you next time. Bye.